on what day? Sabbath. Ah. I think I see. My purpose is not here to get into the law, the legalisms, the requirements, what's what. For your faith walk, pray. Ask the Lord to reveal things to you, what you should be doing, and he will. You're justified freely through his grace. Only through what Jesus did on the cross. That's what Paul was saying when by the works of the law we're not made righteous. You can't make yourself righteous even if you add all the works of the law like not carrying keys on the Shabbat. If you stop that, Daryl, Diane, Shelly and Don, if you walk all the way up next Shabbat, you know what? You still couldn't make yourself righteous. It's only through the blood of Yeshua. But we, it is our job to instruct that he is, and he was, and he is to come. And my closing point, my closing verse with all this is, so what is the Yeshua's role with the law then? Let's take a look at John chapter 1, going to verse 1 to 5, and this concludes it pretty well. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. All things came through Him. That would mean the law as well, right? And there was not one thing that came into being without His participation. What had come in Him was life. This is life. Amen. And in him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. And the light shines in the darkness. Nevertheless, the darkness has not appreciated it. We see, he didn't come in some way to do away with the law in favor of faith. He was bringing faith to the law. Amen. He was giving a purpose for the law through our faith. Not doing away with it. Move over law, make room for faith. Move over legalistic works that bind you to this and hopelessness because your faith will set you free so that you can follow it. Last point, I promise the last one will be the last point, but this is because it's still going off of John. If the kids were paying attention, you didn't, they would remember in the class we did a math problem. Who's good at math? The kids had to subtract the year 1500 and subtract from it the year 300. In the year 1500, I'm not saying exactly in that year, but around that year, that was when Martin Luther, upon reading the scriptures, came to the conclusion that we are justified through faith alone and not of any works of the law is what we've established here. And we took out of it the year 300 which is around the beginning of organized Christianity. And what was the subtraction? What, what did we get out of it? 1,200. 1,200 what? 1,200 years that it took organized Christianity to get to the point where it says, you are saved through what Jesus did on the cross. 1,200 years. We stand up here even 500 years later just to say that, yes, that's true. But that's not because he did away with anything. Right. Right. Amen. He 
established it even further because he gives you the hope of faith with which to carry it out. Amen. That brings up the this point in four. The light shines in the darkness. Nevertheless, the darkness has what? Not appreciated it. That's why it took us so long. And as I look around, there's not a huge crowd here. So that tells me it's going to take even longer. But we got to keep pressing on so that we can take as many with us as will come. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you all for, um, for listening. For a many. <laughs>
I mean, think about it. Go up to, ask, ask one of the younger people, 16 years, 15, in, in Glen Oak, okay? go up to some, some, the kids, because nine-tenths of the kids there have never stepped foot in the church or opened a Bible, and you're going to say, hey, you're saved by the blood. You're like, what are you talking about? Okay? That's what Martin Luther is trying to communicate, and that's what my brother is trying to communicate. And these are truths that are, like I said, not even, we have taken truths and we have, we have formulated our own. And that's what we've done in Judaism, and that's what we've done in Christianity. You know, goodness, brothers and sisters, I don't think it's any, any mistake that, that God has found us a way out of the Christian church and found us a way out of Messianic Judaism because quite, quite, because quite frankly, as he made sort of a little quip there, most of you didn't catch it. He said, not according to the MJA, which is Messianic Jewish Alliance of America. Yeah. And so the point what he's trying to make is, is, that, is that as far as the Messianic Jewish Alliance is concerned, is that there are certain, certain truths that are applicable to Jews and certain truths that are applicable to non-Jews. Okay? So again, here we are. We have created different truths, ones that accommodate our agenda. This is an important, important word that Brother Vic has brought. And it's very important for us at this day to communicate these realities. Not to so much beat up on the lies, but let's start just communicating the truth. Let's not worry about the counterfeits. Let's worry about what's real. All right, and start living it. That's the important part, because we're not all living it. Let's start living it, because our witness will bear the truth. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, I thank you for Vic, and again, I invite you all here for next Shabbat, and certainly for the subsequent wedding, and uh, uh, we're going to uh, we're gonna have some, a, lot of, a lot of people here uh, next Saturday with uh, Brother Tony from L.A., and uh, uh, again, who supported this congregation since the very beginning, and Pastor Tim Smith, and we'll have uh, uh, Rabbi Holbrook, so we're going to have quite a group here. So I hope that uh, that you will join with us for either Shabbat or both Shabbat and wedding. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father, in Yeshua's name, I thank you that, Lord, your word continues to go forth. And, Father, with willing vessels that are there to communicate it. It's a prophetic word. It's a word that's, that's, that's Father, that in this day and age, Father, needs to be uh, embraced. It needs to go forth with courage and with boldness. Father, we stand in confidence on your word. We stand in confidence that these truths, though, this truth, though, uh, Father, in contention with the truths of our day, whether in our religions and our faiths of the day, Father, it's a truth that stands on its own. That's how we have to stand, Father. We have to stand in our witness and stand with the word. So I pray in Yeshua's name, Father, that you continue to anoint brothers like Vic, and that you anoint all of us, Father, who have access to the word, to go forth with those truths, with the truth of your word, the good news of Yeshua. And, and Father, not only that we are saved by grace, but Father, that we live a life growing in, in, in understanding with you, Father. And, and in that truth, Father, we will see progressively revealed in our lives, Father, those realities of your word, the words of Yeshua, and the words of Rabbi Shaul, and the words of Peter. All these words, Father, under the anointing of your Holy Spirit, that give us, Father, a life that's abundant and full and blessed. Father, we are the good news, Father, because, Father, we communicate the good news of Yeshua. And the good news is that we've been saved by grace, and so can you. And I pray, Father, that there are those who will receive this message. And we pray in Yeshua's name. And the congregation says, Amen. Yivarech Yahweh, v'yishmarecha, z'adonai parabalecha v'yikoneicha, Sadunai Panavalecha Visim Lecha Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And I pray the Lord to lift his countenance upon you and that he would grant you his shalom. Hashem Yeshua Adonai and the congregation says, Amen. Amen, Danny.